Altruism is a very interesting phenomenon. It's been documented several times in nature that one animal will put its life at risk and oftentimes be killed for the greater good of others. It could almost be said that these animals are acting morally. At first glance, however, it would appear that this is a problem for evolution. That is to say that these animals that are carrying these genes responsible for this behavior are being killed. So how does that put them at a selective advantage? Well, one example um, of an animal that does such a thing is called the belting alarm squirrel. That's what will be the subject of this video, and hopefully it'll answer that question. The belting alarm squirrel is a small squirrel that lives in California. Its main predators consist of birds of prey from the air, such as hawks. What happens, interestingly, is that whenever an animal or, or one of these squirrels senses that it's about to be eaten or sees a hawk, it'll immediately let out an alarm cry, alerting all of the other squirrels in the area. Unfortunately, though, for that squirrel at least, it frequently diverts the hawk's attention from whatever animal it was going after to the animal that made the call, oftentimes resulting in its death. Now, this has been studied extensively, and it has been shown that the animals, or the squirrels rather, that let loose this cry are killed much more frequently than those who do not. So, how does it happen? The explanation for this behavior is called kin selection. Kin selection is the idea that animals will engage in altruism if it will save members of their own family. So, naturally, members of your family will share your genes. So, in essence, by saving their family members, these animals are actually saving their own genes, albeit indirectly. So, while this sounds fascinating, one needs to be a good scientist and ask whether or not the observations support it. As far as social structure is concerned, there are two different types of squirrels in any group. Resident, meaning that they were born in that group and have many relatives present, and non-resident, meaning that they arrive from a different population. One observation that we make is that callers are typically old, reproductive females with a living mother, adult daughter, or adult sister present. So does this match the concept of kin selection? Absolutely. Remember, the whole basis of kin selection is that the genes are preserved in a family member because of the caller's sacrifice. If kin selection were true, one would expect animals with reproductively capable female relatives to call more often than those without them. Another observation that's made is that resident squirrels are much more likely to call than non-resident squirrels. So does this match kin selection? Once again, absolutely. A resident caller is much more likely to have family members, think same genes, saved by their actions in the cry of a non-resident caller. So it's also important to note that kin selection is not at contrast with individual selection. That's basically to say that they're not mutually exclusive, and while they're often at odds, the true fitness, the net fitness of an organism is the sum of many individual factors and components. Kin selection is often described by something called Hamilton's Rule, which states that genes should increase in frequency when R times B is greater than C. In this equation, R is the genetic relatedness of the recipient to the actor. For example, because direct offspring get one half of their genetic information from a parent, it would be 0.5 for a parent calling to save a son. For a grandchild, it'd be 0.25, since a quarter of the genes of the grandparent are present in any given grandchild. The same can be calculated for nephews, which is also 25%, and cousins are at 12.5%. B in this equation represents the additional reproductive benefit gained by the recipient of the altruistic act, while C is the reproductive cost of the individual performing the act. The take-home message is that the more related the caller is to the animal saved, and the greater the reproductive benefit the call is to the organism, the more likely that the, the act is continued, or, or the more likely that the act is favored by evolution and will become prevalent in the population. One could also look at the situation in this example that if an individual loses its life to save two, sifli two siblings, four nephews, or eight cousins, it's a fair deal in evolutionary terms. But this isn't unique to building alarm squirrels. There are many other examples of this in nature. For example, it's been documented that prairie dogs are also more likely to sound an alarm call if they have close relatives nearby. Subordinate turkeys also will help a dominant older brother put on a mating display, reducing the chance that they will find a mate, but increasing the chance that their brother will. So in conclusion, kin selection is a very real event, it's a very real phenomenon, and the evidence actually supports its existence. Like many other things in evolution, it would appear to fly in the face of evolution at first glance, but once additional information and an explanation is given, it actually supports evolution. My next video will be on kin selection in wasps, which is very interesting because they're what's called haplodiploidy species. So, thanks again for tuning, and please leave your comments, rate, favorite, etc. Take care.